Hello and welcome to the second of four Longines HKIR countdown shows here. The Turf World Championships coming up on Sunday at Charton and what a spectacle it will be. Tom Wood here with uh, Graham Cunningham. Uh, Graham, uh, off the back of what was a, a sensational night at Happy Valley last night for the Longines International Jockeys uh, Championship where Zach Purton prevailed and uh, with a couple of legs to go, it was still anybody's uh, go really. Yeah, Tom, it's great to be here. A tremendous week's racing in prospect. It was a spectacular night last night. You're absolutely right. It was also a bit of a surreal night because there were hardly any race goers were behind closed doors pretty fully, only owners and occasional family members. So it was a very unusual experience. We're normally used to almost 20,000 people here, beer garden rocking. So it was a very strange experience. But I suppose sport all over the world has been like that for nine, 10 months now. I want to ask you a question before we get rolling today. You were the caller here last night up on high. That must be a very unusual experience. How does it affect your night's work to have hardly a, a, a soul or a sound around? Well, you certainly notice it, Graham, with uh, no one down there. Normally there's a, a real sort of amphitheater down there in the, the beer garden when you've got uh, 20 or 22,000 down there. Um, it certainly was different last night. I, it was my second uh, time calling the, uh, the IJC and it was noticeably different. Uh, very quiet, very eerie. A lot of security around, a lot of uh, broadcast staff and um, not much else, but um, it, was, uh, it was still a tremendous night to be part of. Um, I felt like you had to sort of just add that little bit extra. Not that you hear the, the PA system here like you would around other jurisdictions in the world, but um, just felt they had to add that bit of extra oomph for those who couldn't be here that were taking in the telecast. Yeah, these big sports have become effectively made for TV mm. events nowadays. So no pressure on the broadcasters. Uh, and never any pressure on Zach Purton. He's ice cold and, and he had a tremendous night last night. Before we have a look at, at the highlights, we should mention um, the best supporting actors and actress because Alexi Bedell, Holly Doyle, and of course, Joel Moreira all made a big impression as well last night. tonight and they weren't the best rides in the race but the barriers give them a chance to be competitive and I just needed a little bit of luck and fortunately things went my way. Especially when it's in a competition as prestigious as this and there's so much on the line. It certainly uh, feels nice to have won it again and uh, it's, it's another moment that I'll cherish. Awesome stuff there from Zach Purton last night. Not only knocking off uh, the 2020 IJC, but also bringing up 1,200 winners in the process, Graham. Yeah, he's a guy who keeps a very beady eye on record. And there's one in the offing for this weekend. There are two guys who've ridden eight Longines HKIR winners in history. Gerald Mosse is one. Zach Purton is another. A win for Exultant or one of Zach's other two mounts would make him the sole possessor of the record for number of IR winners. It certainly would, so we'll come back to that a little bit later on the show. Ed Sadler, he's our roving reporter. He's been out and about on duty covering all the stories during the week. Let's hear what Ed has heard from all the connections, the key players over the last 24 hours or so. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Graham. And before I get to track work, Tom, terrific calling last night at the IJC on what was a really enjoyable competitive night's racing. You did a great job. So to track work today, and the main takeaway for me came from the two Japanese horses we got to see on the turf track. I was really taken by the way the Tower of London stretched out in his piece of work. He hasn't raced for quite a while. He goes into this race fresh, the Hong Kong Sprint. He's going to be ridden by William Buick. William actually rode him in Japan a couple of years ago. So on Sunday, he's going to be renewing an old acquaintance. I think he's fit. He's ready to go. Um... I wouldn't have any any doubts about that. Um, I think this morning was a uh, was his final his final serious serious piece. 
and um, you know I think the whole idea behind it was to, to put him spot on for Sunday. And when you look at the field, uh, the Hong Kong sprinters have a strong record in this race. What do you make of Tower of London tapes? I think he has a, I think he has a good chance. Um, it's obviously it, it's a tough race. I mean, you've got the other Japanese runner, Dan and Smash, um, and obviously the local local horse, Hot King Prawn, who's um, obviously uh, going to be a hard horse to beat um, on, on, on home ground. Um, and um, obviously classic legend as well. So it, it's a... It's a Top class sprint as you as you would expect. We also saw Winbright out on the track, the defending Hong Kong Cup champion from last season. I caught up with his jockey, Masami Matsuoka, and I asked him in English, can you win the Hong Kong Cup again? He answered in English, I hope so. But then in Japanese, here was his more extended response on the horse's hopes. Mm, uh, last two uh, uh, challenge was the, he was uh, anxious about uh, uh, his uh, body weight uh, for the transportation, uh, whether he will lose, lose the weight or not. Uh, but this time uh, he transported uh, well, uh, but uh, the body weight uh, was uh, not uh, going to be less. So it was a little bit concerned of him. Uh, he was thinking about. Uh, he assumed that it will be uh, just a little bit less for the transportation, but this time uh, it, it is uh, level off to the, this time. That is good news. Uh, do you think he can win the Hong Kong Cup again, Matsuoka-san? I hope so. Winbright, of course, is signing off from his race and career on Sunday in the Hong Kong Cup. So best of luck to his connections as he hopes to go out on a high. He is two from two here in Hong Kong. From the track here this morning, the news then moves on to the barrier draw in the parade ring later on. And the draw has the most important significance for the sprint. A big field of 14 to line up. And as we know, guys, the run to the first turn from the 1,200 metre start point is not that long. So, Graham, Tom... From this morning's draw for the sprint, who are the winners and losers? It's an all-important question, Graham. Who are the winners and losers from the sprint uh, barrier draw? I, I tend to think Classic Legend's a loser from gate number one in terms of uh, the draw that he's been able to pick up there. I think Not he is. ideal, is it? I think he is, because he's likely to get back anyway. But if you're drawn one on a hold-up horse, mm. your rivals roll across you and you tend to be hemmed in on the inside for significant chunk of the race so traffic could be an issue for vincent hall and classic legend we'll talk about him in a little more depth in a minute but really beautiful footage of the win bright uh, saga at chartin two group one wins here uh, really colorful connections terrible job for edward sadler with his <laughs> lack of japanese there but we'll forgive him that one he's working very hard um i, I can't go with him myself tom Winbright. what about you I'm inclined to put him in because he does seem to grow another leg when he comes to Hong Kong, does he? He's two from two. They seem to be able to get the horse to peak at the right time. I get that completely, but his recent form is a little bit... It's patchy. Mm. He's it been is light, patchy. He's been lightly raced. And I look back on last year's Hong Kong Cup. I, I don't want to knock him any way, but I think Magic Wand would have beaten him with a clear shot yeah. that day. And Magic Wand is not as good as Magical. I don't think she's good as, as the likes of Dan on Premium, et cetera. So all the best. It, it's a shot to nothing in a way. And, and as you say, the, the key point for him is that when he gets to Chartin, he tends to blossom. So we're highlighting one of the, the big races coming up on Sunday afternoon at Sha Tin. The, the race we're focusing on in, uh, today is the uh, Hong Kong sprint over the 1,200 metres. Let's have a look at the field uh, for the contest. A terrific lineup of uh, gallopers as well. Just the one Group 1 winner in the race, that is Tower of London. But Classic Legend comes into this from Barry number 1. The only time he's been in Barry number 1 uh, was in the Golden Eagle, and he was beaten. Hot King Prawn there, he's been rounded all the big dancers. He's looking for that elusive Group 1 uh, victory voyage warrior we know as a group two winner computer patch out of gate number 11 Christoph Sumion picks up the ride there big party the old boy Jolly Banner going around Zach Purton's picked up the ride on amazing star with the defection of the Singaporean Inferno and you've got stronger down the bottom there as well for Pierre Charles Boudot out of gate number four so just the one group one or uh, one winner in the race uh, Graham that is uh, Tower of London I've seen him down at the track this morning he looks like he's got a, a bit of a winter coat but uh, from what we saw of him this morning at the track he looked and fine fiddle. Yeah, I'm intrigued by these two Japanese sprinters, but not intrigued enough uh, to suggest that I can be really confident. Tower of London has had a pretty long break. 
Uh, Dan on Smash, I think, might be the better of the Japanese. They've both drawn pretty high. Mm. I'm not really going to hold that too much against them. I, I'm just not sure they're quite good enough. Dan on Smash of the pair um, uh, over Tower of London. But I think the key horse has to be Classic Legend. And there's no room for fence sitting with a horse like Classic Legend. It's either he's the best sprinter in the world on official figures, and if he produces his best, he'll be too good. That's a perfectly liable, viable line of reasoning. But it's not the full story. No. He peaked in a massive way when he won the Everest in runaway style. But since then, his preparation has been very rare, very unusual for a top line horse. He went straight into quarantine, having left his longtime trainer at Les Bridge in Australia. A couple of weeks quarantine down there. Long flight to Hong Kong. Couple of weeks quarantine in Hong Kong. Joins a new trainer, Casper Founds, who knows plenty about him. But there is an element of feel your way with any new horse in the barn. A trial that was, well, let me ask you, I thought it was okay, uh, no better than that for my money. Well, he, he wasn't a gun out of the gates. We've got some footage of the, the trial as well. He wasn't a gun out of the gates. Um, he sort of sat just in behind them, Vincent Ho, was towards the outside uh, rail at Charlton and then sort of came across to the, the middle part of the track to try and get off for heels. What you missed on that list of things that he's had to do over the last wee while is that he's been uh, sedated somewhat to have his branding done. He's been inoculated as well. So he's had all that go on. Les Bridge would have had him peaking at the time for the, um, the Everest. Casper's tr got to try and get him up again. The trial certainly had plenty of tongues wa wagging. Mm. I thought it was just slightly above par. Yeah, I, I think it'd be fascinating to see what the market makes of classic legend. I think it'd come up really short. Do you? Yeah, I do. Uh, I think people might be content to take a, take a, a chance and, 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 and think that you know, his preparation may leave him vulnerable. Uh, I'd be surprised if he's not around about 2.7, 2.8. You think he might be shorter than that? Well, I reckon a lot of the, the spruiking on social media and whatnot from all his fans in Australia sort of suggests he might even come up sort of 1.9, even money. I said there's no room for sitting on the fence. I'll get off and, and, and say I'm cautious. Uh, I, I am cautious about uh, the draw, but most of all the preparation. What about you? Yeah, if, just, if he comes up a really short price, I think sort of anything under 250 is certainly taking unders just with the, the preparation he's had. But Casper Founds has admitted in the last week since he had that gallop, I think, uh, Tuesday morning. Well, turned the corner. Yeah, he's turned the corner. He, mm. He's come on since then. He's improved. And the problem is, Tom, there was a corner to turn. Exactly. And you don't want corners to turn with no. 2.5 chances no. ahead of a big run. It'd be great. If he, if he does a, a Chautauqua uh, and really bolts up, then the world and Hong Kong racing has a, a new, genuine, top-notch sprinter. So good luck to him. But I, I do have slight reservations myself. What about the rest of them? Well, the rest of them, well, it's hard to leave out Hot King Prawn. He was terrific last time out in the, the Jockey Club uh, sprint, uh, sat wide and uh, was still able to fend them off on that occasion. He takes on a lot of his rivals. Computer Patch was second in that race. Ratton was third in it. But I think in a, a race like this amongst the local brigade, he, he is the benchmark. He is a tremendous horse. He's a really unusual uh, horse by sprinting standards. We always associate sprinters with being high metalled, high energy, on the toes in the paddock, ready to roll. You watch Hawking Prawn in the paddock, and it's like watching an, an old steeplechaser go around. He's super relaxed. He saves every ounce of energy for when it matters most. That's what makes him a super consistent, reliable horse. Just caught in the final few strides in this race 12 months ago by his stable mate, Beat the Clock. I'd say he's probably the same horse 12 months on. Based on that Jockey Club sprint win, he is highly likely to run an absolute screamer again. And if Classic Legend doesn't deliver his A game, then Hot King Prawn should be poised. Legend, what about a horse like Computer Patch? Yeah. Um, he keeps on improving. Of course, he demolished a, a very small field down the straight, uh, over 1,000 metres. And uh, Well, Karis Teton was on board him, but uh, Connections have opted for a change, and Sumion gets on. Yeah, that's a tough break uh, for Karis. But I think, uh, if you'll pardon the pun, Connections have clocked the clock. He's gone really hard mm. on a strongly run races the last two times, uh, Computer Patch. Now, Tony Cruz says he's a sprinter. He's going to go forward again. Um, I like his chances. I think if you like Hocking Prawn, you have to like Computer Patch. Uh, he is uh, lower mileage than most of these rivals. I think he's still improving, not by leaps and bounds, but I think he belongs at this level now. And I think those two horses for mine, Hocking Prawn and Computer Patch, are serious contenders. There are horses you could make a case for from in behind in the Jockey Club sprint. Rattan has come home strongly on his last couple of runs. Wishful Thinker can do it when he's in the mood. But I don't particularly like those horses who come and pick up pieces late in strongly run races. To my mind, and I think the clock backs this up, Hot King Prawn 
and computer patch are just probably the best of that bunch. So we touched on that uh, Zach Purton has lost the ride on Inferno with the horse coming out uh, during the week, but he does pick up the ride on Amazing Star, and uh, he's been talking about to HKIR past and present with Ed Sadler. Zach, thanks for your time this morning. You're on fatherly duties, I see. Yeah, it, uh, it never ends, especially at the moment when they're off school, but uh, it's good to bring him over and get him out of the house for a bit. Very good to have Cash here as well too then. Now let's look back at your time in the international races. You've been part of it for 13 years, but am I right in saying the first international day you were here, you only won right on the day? I did, it was in the last race as well, and that had 118 pounds for Andy Lung and started 50 to one. I might have been better off sitting upstairs at the buffet than waste sitting in the sauna all day to ride that horse, but things uh, have obviously got better since then, and thankfully so. Do you have to pinch yourself with how far you've come in that period of time? Yeah, of course, uh, to look back and uh, see uh, all the achievements uh, I've been able to do here and, and the things I've ticked off. You know, it, it is a bit like that for sure. So when you look back at those wins then, starting off with Ambitious Dragon and then more recently to Exult and Beauty Generation, what are the ones that mean the most to you? Well, your first one's all, always special. Uh, it gets you uh, going and, and gives people confidence in being able to to give you uh, the, the decent quality rides going forward. So he, he certainly helped me there. Uh, took a great deal of satisfaction out of Aero Velocity and winning at such an old age um, after the setbacks he had had as well. So, you know, that was nice. Um, time warp to, to complete the set um, was great. And, uh, you know, they, they've all been fantastic, but, um, you know, they're probably the ones that, that stick out the most. And, and, you know, we can't forget about uh, how dominant Beauty Generation was the year, uh, the last time he won as well. So there's a lot of great memories and hopefully uh, I've got a few more ahead of me. Let's talk about one of your better hopes then, Exultant. Can he win the Vars again? I hope so. He may not be going as good this season as he was last season going into it, but he's a quality horse and he's had um, some genuine excuses in the way the races have been run um, at strong speeds when he hasn't quite been fit. So this small field with, you know, the lack of pressure in the race, hopefully we can get um, some easier sectionals. He's now fit, he's ready. Um, he always runs well in this race and I'm looking forward to riding him. And what about Beauty Generation? Uh, can the old boy fire one more time? Well, I hope so. I certainly believe he's still got it in him. Um, it's just a matter of him mentally wanting to be able to do it. Uh, physically, he looks great and he, he's moving well. He feels good. There's nothing wrong with his action. Um, just as an older horse, he hasn't really wanted to get into the fight that he used to love getting into. And let's just hope that he's got that one more big run in him. Do you think that bit of freshness will help him? Yeah, I think it will. Um, and, and that's specifically why uh, his program's been geared to, towards getting into this race when he's fresh. And let's just hope that that's the key. And just a final one, you're one of the elder statesmen in the jockey's room these days. You've been here for 13 years, but 2020 is a unique year amongst those 13 years. How's the build-up to this year's international meeting been for you? It's certainly more of a sombre mood. Uh, one thing I really enjoy about this week is everyone from all um, different corners of the globe being able to come here. You get to catch up with all your friends and there's a real buzz and a vibe to the place. And, you know, as you said, as 2020 has been, it's, uh, it's a lot quieter, it's a little bit more dull, but at the end of the day, We've still got two great race meetings coming up and the horses are here, the prize money's still on offer and there's still a job to be done. I can see Cash is getting a bit restless, uh, so I'll let you go, Zach. Thank you very much for your time and let's hope that you can add to your HKR record on Sunday. Thanks, Edward. Terrific to hear from Zach Purton, the leading jockey here in Hong Kong. Well, he's got a book of nine rides coming up on Sunday, Graham. The only race he misses out on is the Cup. And I think, in fact, I'm pretty sure it's the first time he's missed an IR race in five years. Uh, rides in those races are hard to find, but he's been very busy. Uh, it's the first time he'll watch an IR race from the weighing room on TV uh, in five years. But he's got one ace in the pack this weekend, exultant, he touched on. Is he exactly the same horse he used to be? Some people are doubting it. I think it's early days to be writing him off. That horse should be pretty much at his peak uh, this weekend. And he's got one serious rival to beat in Mogul for Aidan O'Brien. Uh, I think he's bound to go extremely close. Sort of top five material? Yeah, he's got tons of speed, got a good draw, top quality jockey on board, and it's, it's a very open race behind the first couple in the market. But no, Purton got a real boost last night from the IJC. He's got a great deal to do if he's going to win his jockey's title again, but um, he won't be worrying too much about that if Exultant wins. No, he certainly won't be. So uh, could become uh, the uh, 
most winning most uh, jockey here in Hong Kong in terms of IR races, currently equal on eight at the moment with uh, Gerald Mosse. A man who's got a significant ride in the $28 million Hong Kong Cup is Ryan Moore uh, with the magical, uh, the top quality mare, seven group ones, looking to add eight to her telly. Minding one seven group ones for Aidan O'Brien, a world-class miler, Rocker Gibraltar did likewise, and uh, superstar stayer Yates also won seven. Uh, magical has seven so far. It could be eight this weekend. And listen to Aidan O'Brien when he talks about this filly. His language tells you all you need to know about what he thinks about her. on a break and Jamie kept saying that listen this filly is physically like after doing unbelievable and then um, Patrick Murphy who rides her out started back doing a little bit before she was to go to Coolmore he started saying the same like she's moving brilliant physically mentally everything is brilliant and we spoke to the lads then and they made the decision listen we should give her another chance anything from mile mile and a quarter mile and a half uh, all types of ground and loves racing like things always haven't worked for in races, but she's always turned up and always ran great races, you know. So, listen, she's amazing filly for everybody to have, and, and uh, like we're delighted that the lads made the decision to keep her. It's right up at the very top. It's one of our big standout races, and it's one of those races that can be can stand with any race all over the world. We knew it was going to be an absolute brawl. The ARC winner was in it and we had Japan in it and, and Gaius was there and like we were hoping that they were all going to come and run. Um, and, and I really mean that, you know, because it was important for the race. We just felt that uh, we were hoping Gaius would come, he would go a good gallop and, and we would follow him. Um, and she she's one of these like teak tough, like made out absolute steel. Uh, like she was all she wanted was a real good horse to, to take her and uh, and to drag her. It was it was a matter of which one was going to crack the first really, and and obviously when you get a filly like that at that age and that stage of their career, like when the when the I suppose going gets very tough and 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 they start mauling each other, they, they don't usually crack and and that came out the way with her. She was not going to give in. Like it was one of those special days really. Well, that's got bad ground and messy race, slow pace, went to America the same thing, no pace, hacking. She has to be at a high tempo for a long time before she really clicks in. Um, even though she was beaten twice, we were very happy with the filly uh, in her two runs and we're very happy with her sense. Yeah, sure, listen, it would be incredible. And listen, obviously it's a very tough race. No horse would deserve it more than her. She's very few races she has run in other than group ones and she has traveled, she's she's danced every beat. Privileged to, for us to have her and, and uh, uh, every day she runs is, is a great day for us, really. Wonderful mayor, magical and a special guest on the tomorrow's Longines HKIR countdown show. He'll be zooming in, Aidan O'Brien, that'll be a real trick, Graham. It is, one of the highlights of the week and one of the highlights of the week, clearly, his three runners on Sunday but especially magical because uh, those top quality flat horses who stay around and travel are rare and you have to enjoy them. So there won't be too many more dancers for magical. I I'd love to see her win. And of course she's capable of winning. Her rating tells you that, her record mm. tells you that. But interesting to pick out a few key words there. Irish champion stinks. We knew it was going to be an absolute brawl. They were mauling each other. She had a very hard race. She went to Ascot and gave it all, wasn't quite good enough on soft ground. She went to America and it was a tactical race, hard at work, a good way out, battled on well, not quite quick enough against a, a budding star in Tarnawa. Um, Highland Reel was a, the male equivalent of, of this mare in many ways and he had hard races. He went to the Ark and he went to the Breeders' Cup and came on here and still delivered. It can be done. Uh, but it's not a gimme when a horse has had such a busy schedule. I was about to ask quickly about Highland Reel because Aidan has brought him here and he's a, a two-time winner of the Vars. Is this the best horse Aidan has brought here mm. since Highland Reel, do you think? Yeah, I think it is. Uh, I have to work through the records, but I, I think it probably is. And I mean, she has the sex allowance as well. She's looked perky and well in her fairly gentle exercise uh, on the all-weather track this week. Interesting to see what she does over the next couple of days. I wish her every success. It would be a tremendous way... Uh, for Ryan Moore to end the year. It's been a very sort of patchy year for Ryan. 
um, when you're the most travel jockey in the world, uh, 2020 in a pandemic is going to hinder your progress. So he's got a great shot at uh, ending the season on a massive high. But I do think there are serious dangers uh, in the Hong Kong Cup, and we'll touch on those over the next day or two. Yes, yeah, certainly um, there are other European challenges in the race. Um, we caught up with, well, Ed Sadler caught up with uh, the trainer of Scaletti coming into the weekend's uh, meeting. That is uh, Jerome Rennier. Thank you much for your time. How have your two horses settled in here? Yeah, no, we're very happy. They've been travelling really well. Uh, they're about the same weight as when they left, so all seems to be good. Just Royal Julius has a little uh, white blood cell count, a little high, so we've been uh, quite easy on him for the past few days, but now he's back to normal, so tomorrow he'll be uh, probably cantering away. Scaletti has done his first piece of counter this morning, and he was uh, pretty nice and relaxed on the track. Uh, he's uh, ready to go. He's done all his fast work at home. And he's just here to just uh, see what it's like. And uh, he's a horse that we've been doing a lot of work mentally because he's be, he can be a bit anxious. So he just needs to yeah to be relaxed and happy. And once you keep him happy, you have the the horse on uh, top of his shape. Let's expand upon Scaletti then. Uh, a winner of 12 from 16. That's a terrific record he boasts. Yeah, no, I know he's. Uh, he has been starting from really low level uh, down the provincial tracks in France, and he has been gradually going up and up. Uh, he's been winning some uh, class twos in Paris uh, after winning a listed race in Vichy, a group three in Deauville, and then a group two last year in, uh, in Longchamp, and another group two in Rome. So he did end up the, uh, the right way. And this year, with the COVID and uh, the lockdown in France, we, have, we haven't been able to race him during two months. And he hasn't been able to come back uh, before May on firm ground. And uh, he was very keen. And uh, six or seven months without racing, he was, we haven't been able to prep him the, the, the right way because he was too fresh and he's been pulling hard for his comeback. So we've been racing him over one mile for his first two start of the year just to make sure he was not going to pull too hard. And even though he was a bit keen on his two first starts, but after back to a mile and a quarter, he has been beating the future arc winner, Satsas. And he's been winning the Prix Dollar for the second time. And he's, uh, for the first try at uh, the Group 1 level, he's been, uh, I mean, putting a big, big performance, finishing second to Adebe and beating Magical. So, but that was on quite sticky ground. And today, uh, on Sunday, that will be a different scenario. He'll be back on good ground, but he's been winning a one mile straight Group 3 in Deauville on really firm ground. And he raced, I think, in 135 of a one mile straight. So that was a very good performance too. So we're very confident with him as he's a really good horse and he, he never disappoints you. So from your point of view as his trainer, then you're confident that he can race well on firm conditions here in Hong Kong? No, I think so, yeah. You just need a a race with enough pace so he won't be pulling. So I think Magical will be putting a lot of pressure on the Japanese filly if she goes in front. So it should be a proper proper race with a decent pace. So, I mean, he'll be, I think he'll be happy to wait and try to use his turn of foot to finish the race quite uh, the way he likes to do it. He's an up and coming young trainer, uh, Jerome, isn't he? Only 35 years of age, uh, come through the, the golf, uh, Godolphin uh, Flying Start program. and took on a, a task as a bloodstock agent, now a trainer and... 80-something um, uh, winners in France in the top 10 in the te uh, table. Scaletti's interesting. I don't think people will go mad on him in the market here. Uh, it's just a question of whether he handles fast ground. If he does, he's a dangerous horse. He's got a terrific win record. I don't think he's just a wet track horse because he is one for one on a, uh, a firm good track. Yeah. So I don't think he's just a, a wet horse and he's been working well and uh, yeah, I agree, he flies under the radar. Yeah, he adds a lot of value to that race. And although he's got a lot of form on soft ground, when you watch his races, Tom, he's a powerful traveler. He jumps into the bridle and as the trainer suggests, he's not short of speed. So keep a close eye on Scaletti this weekend. As we wrap things up, um, is it at the cup? Is it a contest between Magical and Furore? No, absolutely not. Keep a very close eye on the Japanese and not win bright. Dan on premium is, um, I won't say flying under the radar. I, I think he'll be well found in the market. I have a high regard for that horse. I think he looks terrific. I think everything is set up. Ground, trip, the campaign he's had, a light one. I think everything is, is set fair for him to run a huge race. All the best of Magical and Connections. Um, that Ballydor presence adds a huge amount to this weekend. But as we saw last year, Tom, Japan, when they come to IR, they come loaded. Yep, the land of the rising sun, they were uh, dominant to here 
uh, last year for the 2019 HKIR. That wraps up our second Longjin HKIR countdown this show. Graham will be back again tomorrow to uh, preview uh, the next of the, the feature races coming up on Sunday at Sha Tin. Aidan O'Brien will be zooming in as a special guest uh, on the show tomorrow as well. Thanks for your company. We look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.